Hello, I'm George Hayes, and today's tutorial is going to be on SDL t uh, timers, uh, primarily the SDL get tick function, get ticks function, and the primary use I tend to use this for is for timing stuff or setting the timing on things such as uh, ensuring that a car, you know, as far as in a game, is driving at the same speed and so forth. But you can also use timers for you know, triggered events uh, such as let's say you flip a switch on you want something to happen at a certain amount of time after that or if a car is passing through a checkpoint and you want to limit the amount of time they have to make it to the next checkpoint or if you want to have um, you know a countdown timer for something such as I don't you know whatever type of thing it could be you know match you know for the time and stuff like that so I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here and show you what the little demo I have is run and we'll go ahead and run it real quick and it's built and what this is is just showing a car that's running across the screen it's a little choppy right now and that's because we're recording with a system that's using Java to record Okay, so I'm going to jump out of that. And basically, this is the same setup I use for all my other stuff as far as you know, the tutorials. Uh, the only additional include here is this uh, grhsdl timer.h, which is this file over here. I created just something to make it easy to handle a uh, timer and not have to do some of the calculations all right and then as far as in the games.h i added a texture in here of a car so we have something driving across the screen then in x y and w and h and so forth so i could uh, just collect the information for creating the rectangle for the texture and then i create one of my timers you know here and then obviously the rectangle and when I initialize I just set it 600 and 250y and then set these to zero and when I come on init it's all basically the same thing um, I do have SDL resizable window in here in case anyone's really interested in that here we can call this uh, timers in case anybody's wanting that to be different so all I do as far as in our load content is I load the car texture right here then I do a query to it to get the width and the height I dump that into the rectangle here for the car X and Y is set by the X and Y that's here and which was 650 and then I just go on past that jump back into game area once that's loaded to content and it goes into running the loop which goes on and checks for event handles which there's no difference in then on loop is where the actual difference is right now and I do a call to my timer to get the amount of time that's elapsed since the last time then I reset that timer so that the next time I come by uh, through this that time is based this elapsed time is based on the last time that I called this so what we're going to do here is the number of ticks that's gone by for every 10 ticks that's gone by I'm going to move, uh, move the car five spaces to the left as far as on the screen all right this stuff down here is just to get out of the car when it goes all the way over to the far edge of the screen to come back out over here or if it was to go the other direction it would come back out over here and so then all I do is set the rectangle of the car here then as far as on render I call a clear render then uh, render a copy of the car to the render all right and uh, using the car rectangle for setting the position and so forth and then I sit there and call it to present and at the end of it I just have the standard clean up as far as for the render window and I should probably call one here for SDL dash destroy texture I believe yep and we're gonna put in there car and 
that should take care of that. Go ahead and rebuild. All right, no problems. So we'll take a look at my timer real quick. Pass ticks is the is set by when you first start the timer. It set, it sets it as far as to put something in there, and that will give you as soon as the timer is created that will have the amount of ticks that's stored into it that was at it at that time. All right, set timer does the same thing except for it sets the time so whenever each time you want to update it it'll set this to the next time all right get time elapsed goes ahead and takes the current tick count and subtracts the previous tick count all right and returns that to you okay so that's as simple as it is and if we go back in here to on loop you see I call the get time elapsed then I reset that way the current tick time is set into it and the next time I come around it will only show the time since the time that I last set this which is you know the previous loop through alright and go ahead and run it one more time here well maybe a few more times so you can see the difference as you see the car is moving slower across the screen. I'm going to go ahead and make a change on here. And now if I increase this value here, this is going to increase the amount of spaces I move for every 10 of the tick counts that goes by. Now if I reduce the number of tick counts that I'm comparing to, right, so if I want to say for every 5 tick counts I'm going to move minus 5 places then it's going to increase the speed which we should see here when I build and we'll run and you can see the car is moving twice as fast now bring it back to that and we sit there and go to 10 here it'll also move twice as fast but it'll be based on the still 10 tick counts so it'll be a greater jump as far as and it, in this case we don't really have to worry about it because the average amount of tick count going by is actually about 17 at this time well it may be more because I'm running the Java thing on it and we can actually see that because I put some code in here to show us what the current X is in the tick count and we can look at that over on the console and as you can see on the console there's you know, tick counts going by of 17 sometimes 46 and stuff so it'll move the car appropriately so if these things change on here and it like they're doing then it'll sit there and still move the right amount of places so with this one here you know with it being uh, you know for every 10 tick counts it moved uh, seven and a half roughly you know when you got down here it moved roughly you know, 15 at 31 so it just ensures that you know for the amount of time going by it has a consistent movement for that time rate all right and that's good if you're like us got computers that operate at different speeds um, my son's laptop runs you know slower than this one so if you want people to have the same experience on different systems you're going to need something like this for a things that are driving all right all right well i hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for listening and please like it and subscribe have a nice day